Hey, what's up YouTube? So today I'm gonna show you how to tow your vehicle affordably and by yourself without a truck or a trailer. How can we do this? No, it's not with a car dolly. It's with what's called a tow bar. We're gonna answer all them elusive questions of like, how do you hook it up? Do I need to buy $500 worth of brackets? The answer to that one is no, you do not. Why does it tow straight? Well, and what kind of problems can you have? Well, we're gonna answer all that stuff today, and I hope you do. So it was extremely important to me that I didn't mislead people and show them that they weren't unable to do this and have a bunch of people text me and tell me that they couldn't get this done because it wouldn't fit on their bumper. So I went out to the junkyard and I scoured it high and low, removing bumper covers from several different makes and models, SUVs, pickup trucks, foreign and domestic, and I did not find a scenario through all of these cars that I was not able to complete this task as I'm going to show you in this video. Big or small, I promise you can tow them all. My name's Clay with the Clayway and this is Patty Ray. She's not here today. We believe our job here on YouTube is to inspire and empower people just like you to do things yourself with the belief that if anyone else can do it, we promise you, you can do it too. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing our videos, giving us some sweet old thumbs up. And if you've got a question for us, you can hit us up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I can't help you with that old baby mama drama, but I may be able to help you fix that whip. Remember, don't be the next to them, be the very first to you. And when you're searching through my video trying to find the spot that you want, please do us the kind favor. We spend hours upon hours making this stuff. Turn the volume down, restart the videos, and if you want to help the channel further, click that old join button, or at the very least, pop open your computer at nighttime, turn on one of the sweet Clayway playlists, Turn the volume down and let them suckers play from front so to back. So we just bought this thing and we need to get it back home. We don't have a truck and we don't have a trailer. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the front bumper cover of this Jeep. And we're going to hook up a tow bar. This will come in extremely handy when you don't have a pickup truck or something super powerful that can pull a lot of weight. So now we've got the bumper cover removed and I need to point out that they do make tow brackets just like the ones that are on the front of here. But the expense of the tow bracket kind of outweighs the value of not just calling a tow truck. But I wanted to make this video for folks just Now like that you. that's removed, we need to be able to mount our brackets to the bumper right here. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to drill some holes. Now this is a Jeep. And the last time I did underneath this, underneath here was a hook that mounted to the bumper. Well, I took the hook out, mounted my bracket up underneath there like this. And when I went to turn, I turned a little bit sharp and crushed this whole bumper. Now that's not a big deal because these bumpers are fairly inexpensive, but we don't wanna crush this. So this time we're gonna mount the mounts straight to the face and have them come out straight like I've seen every other one do. Now, the reason that I'm making this video is because I looked up tons of content. Maybe I didn't look long enough, but I never seen anybody explaining how this works, what you do with the gears, what you do with the steering wheel, so forth and so on. So I wanted to make a video showing you that you can attach these to anything as long as they have a solid bumper underneath them. Now, my hopes are to mount my brackets here and take this off of here and drill a hole up underneath there. But we need to see what's underneath there. Now, because I'm not gonna be able to utilize that because the bracket is a bit too long and the bolt hole would, re would land in that spot. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna try to put it here if it seems right. Worst case scenario, I'll move the holes over and put it out here. We want it on the flattest spot of this bumper as possible. So we need to make sure that where we mount these at, we mount them in a place that they're as far apart from each side as possible, no matter what we're working on. Now, on the bolts, I'm going to use a large washer. Obviously, this is really kind of thin metal. It will take the brunt of pulling this, but 
we don't want it to pull out and i don't have the washers with me i don't think i'm not certain but i probably won't use a washer on the outside part only because i don't have it with me but you should run down and have two or well in this situation four washers per bracket but this bracket is sturdy enough to act as a washer so i'm good to go there now most of these bumpers are going to have slots in the bottom and that allows me to put my bolt up in here and will allow me to put a wrench up inside there to hold the back side of the bolt as I tighten the bracket down. And if you take off your bumper cover and you find that there's no slots in it for your wrench or for you to fit your fingers down in there or a way to put it up in there, whichever way it's got to go, just cut a hole in it, people. It's really thin metal. It's not rocket science. It's man-made. If man made it, you can do it. Not to mention, you can probably fix it too because you're probably smarter than the ones that made it. Hang my bracket, twist it into place, tighten up my nut enough so it holds my bracket square and straight. Then take a punch, make a mark, then lower the bracket down, drill out the hole, then we're good to go. Okay, since that looks fairly square on both sides, I'm not going to move my brackets out. I was going to drill out a hole there and drill out a hole there and then make extra holes to move it out. But I kind of like the squareness of it. So we're going to keep it the way it is. And now we'll just drill two holes and put our bolts in. So now I've got a pilot hole drilled and I'm going to use a step drill bit. Now, just like the hole that we made over here, we're going to use this step drill bit. Perfecto, very nice. Getting our wrench back there, tighten it up. Don't have to be super tight. I mean, it has to be tight to hold it. Now, after doing this and driving it about 90 miles, I'd recommend lock washers and locking nuts plus large washers. Now, if you're not 100% square, although I think I look pretty close from here, this is a little bit forgiving, not much. You need to be close, but I didn't do any measuring or anything like that. I just put them on. Now, it helps to have an assistant help you with it for putting the first pin in because it's a little bit hard to hang it up and put the pin in there. Once the pins are connected, now we can connect it to the automobile. Okay, now I've got my chains hooked up in there. And take special note that I believe this chain is on the wrong way. This is supposed to be up underneath. Somebody else assembled this thing. I'm going to tighten up these bolts right here. Once I square up the vehicle and the tow vehicle, as I pull them both straight and they're aligned with one another, that's where I want to lock it at so it drives straight behind the car. Now inside the vehicle, we want to turn on the four ways and put it in neutral. So we want to turn the key on, put it in neutral. If you have a transfer case, you want to switch the transfer case into neutral. And because this vehicle is all wheel drive, you either have to tow it on a trailer or tow it on a car dolly. But the only way you could tow it on a car dolly is to take out the rear drive shafts so the rear wheels don't fight against one another. When you're towing a vehicle, your engine is not operating. And when your engine's not operating, that means the pump inside your transmission is not spinning. So if you try to tow a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive vehicle on two wheels without removing parts of the drive line, that makes your transmission spin without your pump spinning, which then in turn burns your transmission up. So it's a tow bar trailer, but no car dollies unless you're willing to take out drive shafts, which in some newer cars can be a real pain in the butt to get out. And this is a situation where you can reuse this tool if you own it. Now for optimal towing, you want the two vehicles to be as level as possible. And this is pointing down a little bit. I don't necessarily like it, but that's what I'm gonna have to deal with because of my drop hitch and the way that the Land Rover does it. Now, anything that's loose on the vehicle, say like these flares, we wanna make sure that we tie these up with some zip ties, something like that, or just remove them entirely. During the editing of this video, I realized I didn't show you people to hook up to safety chains and all of that stuff. And then I thought to myself, do I need to add that? Well, then I realized 
uh, common sense isn't as common as it used to be. And now instead of our owner's manuals telling us to how to set the timing in something, they tell us not to drink the battery acid. So hook up your safety chains. You leave your steering wheel unlocked. So you're gonna more than likely leave your key to the on position so it doesn't lock. I promise you people, your vehicle that you are towing will follow the tow vehicle. I'm going to demonstrate why and how. This is a short that we took from the vehicle as we were towing it. Pat doesn't have her hands on the wheel and the wheel is following the vehicle in front of it as it's pulled. This works no different than a child riding a bicycle without handlebars or a top spinning on a table. It all works under inertia and as the vehicle pulls, it's going to pull it forward. Now you do want to make sure that your tires are inflated properly, but the wheels aren't going to go all wonky and the car isn't going to go all crazy unless, and we'll get to that in a minute. Now you put on some tow lights on the back of there, make sure all of your lights work. Now we're going to take off and when we turn, we do not want to make sharp turns. We just want to tow evenly and as straight as possible. Once I drove down the road a little while, about 20, 30 feet, and was able to pull off to the side with both vehicles straight, I got back out and I checked all of my stuff. Okay, I have to think in the ideal situation that this is supposed to be square and parallel with this. I'm gonna go ahead and lock these down. At first, I felt very, very comfortable driving about 50 miles an hour. The vehicle didn't really sway at all, but it would inertia forward and backwards every once in a while, depending on the grade of the road and the imperfections in it. Personally, I'd recommend keeping the RPMs right around 2000 RPMs, because if you keep them much higher than that, you're going to heat up the transmission fluid, then possibly cause problems if you're going a great distance. Also, whenever driving, allow yourself plenty of space to come to a complete stop. Be mindful of what the road and the people that are around you and also people behind you. Now I'm going to take the turn as wide as possible and we watch the wheels follow the pool vehicle and straighten out. Now we live in the Great White North, Michigan and at times we're going to have deer that jump out in front of us or, you know, any kind of animal could. Remember, just barrel on through that thing. Hit your brakes a little bit, but keep your cool. Do not swerve. I'm sad to say, if you do swerve, life is going to throw you a big curve. Maybe wondering what is going on when the vehicle is making a turn. As you can tell, Pat doesn't even have her hands on the wheel. She's turning, the vehicle's turning, and it will go right back to straight. Okay, so I've been towing for a little while and I wanted to double check everything and make sure all of my bolts are still, still tight. And look at that. I can feel that washer move around inside there. Should have used locking nuts on there. That one's tight. That one's tight. And this one's loose. For the most part, it looks okay. We just need to tighten up them bolts, but it's a good thing that I stopped and checked them. So now that we've been driving for about, oh, I'd say 25 miles, most of the butterflies in my stomach have went away, and I'm really confident that we're gonna be able to get this thing home, even though I'm still a little bit cautious when I go around 90 degree curves. Here on the highway, I'm safely pulling at a fast speed, even though everybody else is passing me. My transmission RPM is not that high, engine RPM is not that high. So I'm not concerned with that, and we're going pretty good. I shouldn't have to mention this, but keeping a very safe distance from other drivers is an extremely good idea because you have a lot of inertia and weight that you need to stop. And stopping the vehicle quickly definitely doesn't happen in this situation. So you're towing a considerable amount of weight and what you might notice as you're towing is your transmission not shifting like it normally does. I recommend not pushing it real hard. You don't have to take off very fast, but you can let your foot up off the gas and it will shift gears. 
you want to try to keep the RPMs below 3,500 when you're taking off because you don't want to overstress the transmission. Well, we made it home about 90 miles, pretty safe and sound. However, though, this washer was a little bit bent and I didn't tighten up the bolt enough. So as you seen earlier, that came a little bit loose and it bent that, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem because the bumper cover covers this and I'm sure it's still structurally sound. Now here on my channel, we do a lot of work on sprinters and taking the front bumpers off of them is not difficult, but towing these things could be really expensive. They make larger style tow bars that are a little bit more pricey but well worth the investment if you own one of these sprinters because let's say that thing breaks down 600 miles from home. Dude, you're talking like, I don't know how much, but a ton of money, more than I have in my corn store for sure. So getting one of them kinds of tow bars, if you own one of these larger vehicles and you're living the good old van life, might be a good idea for you folks out there because you can tow that with a simple pickup truck. Just look at the sticker on the side of the door, see how much it weighs dry, hook her up to a tow bar and go on home, baby. If you folks dug what I did in this video, please consider subscribing, clicking the notifications. And if you have any questions about using a tow bar, I feel pretty experienced now. Feel free to ask him. I'll try to help you if I can. You can look me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I answer everybody's questions that I possibly can. I can't help you with that old baby mama drama, but I may be able to help you with the whip someday. You never know. Press the join button. Subscribe. Give them videos the sweet old thumbs up. And remember, if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. God bless, folks. Have the absolute best of days.